We are live. Brilliant. Good. What's up, everybody? My name is Philip Downing. I'm the creative director of Bedhead. Really excited to be with you today in Los Angeles in the BTC house. It's actually almost four years to the day since I was here last, so it's really nice to be back and share some education with you. This is my wonderful model, Megan. Um, and I say, say hi, Megan. There we go. Everyone, hi, this everyone. is Megan. Um, so we're going to be working with Bedhead's new fantastic professional range, which is called Artistic Edit. So these products are all designed to endorse texture, movement, give shine and restore parity back to hair. We'll get into those a little bit more detail later on. Before I get my hands in there, I just want to quickly show you with the vibe that we're working on with Megan. So quite simply, we're thinking 70s rock and roll. If you guys think of Stevie Nicks, Fleetwood Mac, that kind of soft era of rock and roll. For me, that era was about width, right? So we saw a lot of beautiful movement in the hair and a lot of width. So just quickly, let's look at the section ins that we're working on. So everything that you can see isolated through the perimeter we've actually pre-cut. OK, I'm going to work on the fringe and I'm going to work on the layers for you today. So I'll obviously update you with what we've done through the perimeter. But in terms of sectioning, what we're working on is quite high sections. So the layering technique is actually what I would call shallow progressive layering. So you'll notice that once we've isolated the fringe with two diagonal forwards, we've worked with a curved diagonal section just above the parietal bone. So essentially, the important thing here, this sectioning is above the round of the head. So we're not over layering, we're layering to the round of the head. So we're gonna preserve nice density through the perimeter. And then through the back area, you'll notice some steep diagonals from the occipital bone. So as you can see, if I'm just gonna get you to tip your head slightly forward. So occipital bone, and we're working on a curved diagonal back from the crest bone of the ear. And we're also doing the same on the opposite side. So real nice curved diagonal sections. When we have curved diagonal sections, we're creating softness, right? So I'm going to go straight into the technique and work on the layering. So the actual layering technique is something called a block layering. And this is a great way, especially when you're working on shags or layers, anything where you want to create shorter layers of movement, but also bleed and create more of a visual blend into longer lengths. So I'm going to release that curved diagonal back section. You'll notice I'm in four quarters. So this is great for balance. I don't want to kind of eat too much hair at once. So I'm going to work with this section just here. I'm going to take a diagonal back. I'm going to drop my model's head slightly forward. So just before we start to cut this hair, let's look at target lengths, right? Because I think one of the biggest common questions when we start to disconnect hair is, well, how do you know where to start, right? Because we're not connecting to anything. So target lengths are really important. This is where we visualize and see where we want this layer of movement to be. Now, this is more of a maintenance cut. As you can see, Megan's really cool. We've casted her on purpose. You know, my, one of my favorite sayings in hairdressing is if it's not broken, don't fix it. And value isn't what's on the floor, is it, right? Value of a haircut is not the amount of hair on the floor. Sometimes it's about what we leave on the head. It's that a visualization of hair we keep and hair we remove. So for this layer, I'm actually going to work on something called, like I said, block layering. The shortest you could go with this, just as an FYI, the shortest you could go with this target length would be occipital bone. So our occipital bone's here. If you really wanted to exaggerate this technique, we will go to the occipital bone. The longest we want to leave this would be hairline. So we've probably got about three, four inches of length to play around with there, right? For me, because this is maintenance, I'm actually just going to slice a very, very small amount off. It's probably going to be around half an inch or so, but we're going to open up the blade and create a lot of movement with the technique. Okay, so that's going to be the approach of the haircut. But before we get into that, let me talk about the exciting products that I've prepped the hair with. Okay, so we're actually working with Artistic Edit. This is a beautiful product range. I'm going to go into this in a lot more detail across the range. We've actually prepped the hair with our brand new shampoos and conditioners, our wash and care line, which is coming out mid-2023. That's going to be available from Cosmoprof. It's a beautiful conditioning shampoo and conditioner, purely based on moisture. And we also have some fantastic boosters to put in with a treatment mask. So these are where our clients and us as hairdressers can really customize that back bar experience. For the, for the approach today, I'm actually working on two soft styling products. I've actually got the Base Player Protein Spray. This is absolutely fantastic. Not only does it contain keratin and soy, which of course restore protein to the hair, it's balanced off with coconut oil. So a lot of the times when we use protein sprays, obviously protein adds texture and grip to the hair. That coconut oil just adds a delicate softness and touch to it. So it's an amazing cutting lotion to use. I love this product to prep with. 
Um, and then also what we're going to be working with is the Wave Rider. This is an amazing product which really is about endorsing natural movement and texture. So imagine like a, almost like a soft curl butter for the hair. So any kind of wave or curl pattern that you want to create, this works really, really well. This contains hibiscus and red seaweed. So while it is a fantastic styler, it goes a long way in conditioning the hair also. Uh, so these are the two styling products I'm going to use. We'll get into finishing a little bit later on. Uh, I'm going to start cutting my model's hair before it starts to grow back. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to drop your head slightly forward. So as we can see, like I said, we've got a couple of options for target lengths. I'm going to work this section straight up 90 degrees to the top of the head. So I've actually got a radial division in here. So I'm going to work 90 degrees straight up. And my finger position is square. And I'm going to work a nice square layer. So I'm point cutting square to the head shape. OK, so I'm going to point cut first just to remove that length and then just come in with a very soft, gentle slice. Um, my model has fantastic movement in her hair. I think you guys can see that already. She's got gorgeous movement. So the techniques that I'm working on along with the products are really designed just to encourage that. Right. So I don't really want to change what's going on. I want to encourage it and endorse it. Um, so, you know, we call these haircut shags, you know, mullet is... <laughs> Uh, I think a mullet is something which, depending on where you are in the world, people will call it different things. So there's always extremes of uh, haircuts, isn't there? And there's always softer versions of. But for me, I call this progressive layers. You know, I think it's always nice to have a commercial name for a haircut, right, that our clients are familiar with and understand. But I think for us professionals, it's always nice to have a little bit more of a professional ring. So this is a progressive layered movement. So you'll notice that the kind of area that I'm working on for you is pretty much the rounds of the head. And when we did a consultation with uh, Megan this morning, as always with these kind of haircuts, the problem areas are the rounds of the head, right? So when we think of a head shape, wherever that head shape protrudes the most, which technically is between the crown and the occipital bone, that's where it curves and it's its roundest. That's where weight starts to build up. So you'll notice that this, I'm kind of tackling that first to begin with, really focusing my energy and attention there first, because that is kind of the problem area for, for Megan. Um, so what's happening now with all the subsequent sections, everything's being over-directed up to this stationary point. So you'll notice my body position's maintained. I'm standing at the front of, of Megan. So this gives me a good body position to make sure that I'm over-directing to a stationary point. Um, and I'm just, again, working that slicing technique through. Uh, so today, guys, we want this to be an open forum. So if there's any questions, thoughts, comments, statements, uh, please feel free to jump in and ask questions. We have got a live feed, so I'll be able to hopefully reach as many as possible. OK, cool. So let me just lift that hair up again so you can see that section. So that, that is one quarter done already, right? OK, so I'm just going to turn it this way. So we worked diagonally back. First one was cut 90 degrees, and we point cut and slice square. The subsequent uh, diagonal back sections were over-directed forward to that stationary guy. So with a block layer, what does it mean? It means our first section is the shortest, and then there, every section thereafter gets longer, simply because of the over-direction. So it's a really nice, secure, and also safe way of layering, because you know exactly where you're going to be in terms of your um, target lengths and your subsequent sections. So I'm going to let down the next quarter, take a little bit of hair from the opposite side as a guide. My body position, again, is at the front, but it's now to the opposite side of her face. So just for continuity and balance, I've got my guide from the opposite side. So everything's coming up 90 degrees. Square elbows, and we're point cutting that nice and square. So when we know when we cut square in a layering technique, the whole idea of cutting square is to create corners. So again, when we're talking about safety in layering, square gives us corners, and on a curved surface, i.e. a head shape, that gives us weight. So if you wanted something more aggressive or you wanted to take more hair out, you could go ahead with a, maybe a round layer or something that was decreasing in length. But because we want to maintain corners, and like I said, it's more of a maintenance shape up, I'm working with a square, a square line. So again, just making sure that head's forward. You can see my section's nice and clean, slight diagonal back just through here. I'm going to put my comb in right as that, um, that hair is sectioned up on a diagonal back, and then I'm going to comb straight up to that stationary guide. So I've done this technique on short hairstyles as well. So this sectioning pattern, you know, I think it's always important to look at sectioning patterns, not as gospel. Right? We don't have to just do it only on this haircut or this kind of movement. This actually works really nice on progressive like A-line bobs because, again, it allows you to work that weight removal through the top of the head, uh, but preserve length and density through the rest.
Okay. So again, I'm on my last section now. Megan's being great. She's dropping her head forward. She knows the drill. Ah, there we go. I'll find my last guide. There's my guide, and I'm point cutting square. So the idea of putting cutting lotions in, guys, putting the product in straight away really helps for many reasons. You know, for me, I don't really like to use water in the salon. One simple reason, we don't sell water, right? So put products in the hair that are going to really not only, you know, work with the benefit of the client, what you're trying to endorse, whether it's movement or smoothness, but as you start to work that hair for, you know, typically we have, what, 45 minutes to an hour, those products are starting to get to grip and work in the hair automatically. So it's extra warm in here because of the lighting, but as, the, as Megan's hair starts to dry, you'll notice that movement kicking in, which is great. So just before, let me just turn it to the side so you can see my sectioning. So just through this area where we've got that high curved diagonal section, my body position now is gonna stay at the back. So if you think what I did before, I was on the opposite side of what I was cutting. So now I'm gonna cut the front, I need to stand at the back because that would be replication, right? So I need to stand on the opposite side to what I'm cutting. Again, I'm gonna work with a diagonal back section and each one is gonna be over-directed back to the radial. So when you start to think about what we've done, the crown area, this radial area is almost like, if you think of your home button, this is home, right? So my first one's cut at 90, everything thereafter is over-directed up, everything in the front is over-directed back. So what we start to create is this very, very shift and incline in weight and length. Let me just drop that so you can see, there we go. So each area we're getting longer towards the back and we're getting longer towards the front. So when you think about it, she came in and says, it's, this is the area that's the heaviest, this is the area that gets the longest, this is the bit that gives me the most trouble. So this technique really tackles that and helps to endorse that, that movement and texture. Do we have any questions coming in so far? Do we have any answers? Well, we had we had a question about the over direction, but then you went on and read my mind and just explained it. Great. So no, but I guess I will ask. Um, you're using a variety of point cutting, square sure. layers, and slides. How does that help accentuate her natural texture um, when she styles, or if she allows it to air dry? That's a great question. You know what? One of the one of my kind of biggest aha moments in hairdressing, if you like, was actually personalizing. So to, to answer that question is that you know when, I'll give you I'll be devil's advocate. You know when, I'll give you I'll be devil's advocate and start the other way. When when our clients come in sometimes and they say yeah, you know what, my hair was okay, it, just, it didn't sit right. I know for us as hairdressers, when we hear that sit or control, our natural instinct is to check balance, right? Because we think, oh, maybe it's not right, maybe it's unbalanced. So we check the balance. When a client's hair doesn't sit right or they have difficulty styling movement at home, that's typically when we personalize, i.e. texturize, slice, razor, point cut, in the wrong direction, okay? So everything that I'm doing Every time I go into the hair and I slice, it's the way I want the hair to sit and fall naturally. Okay, so from the front, I slice backwards. And now from the back to the front, I'm slicing forwards. And when you think about it, when Megan's hair sits naturally, so when she goes about her business for the next six to eight weeks, she gets out of the shower, she styles her own hair. That is how her hair is going to sit at natural form. So for example, if I give you, let me, let me play devil's advocate again. I'm slicing right now square from the back to the front. Okay, because that's exactly how her hair is going to sit at natural form. If, however, I went on the opposite side and sliced from the front to the back, for the next six to eight weeks, I'm basically saying, right, your hair is going to grow, sit, and dry backwards off the face. Because I'm making short hair push long hair. And as we know, short hair pushing long hair gives direction and movement. So I need to be super careful to your question there about how I slice into the hair to make sure not only does it sit with how she styles her hair at home, but it's not going to give her trouble. It's going to dry in the same way that she wants it to. And it's going to have a balance, which I think is really important. Okay, so my next section, as the, the further I get towards the face, of, of course, there's more over direction. So that hair's traveling further back. So I'm making sure I've got a nice square body position, my elbows, my hands, everything's working nice and square. And as you can see, I'm starting to run out of hair there anyway. So I'm just really tickling this area. Tickling is a technical term. This is a little trim. So just shaping that area just up through there. And again, just giving it a little bit of a slice. Um, when it comes to slicing, here's another little tip. So I, you know, I've got quite large hands, so I prefer to work with a seven inch blade. That for me works really well on layers and, 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 um, and movement. 
When I kind of work more against the head shape or graduation, I'll tend to use a shorter blade. But when it comes to slicing, here we go, you guys can see in the camera. So we can slice horizontally where the blade is flat and we can also slice vertically. So you can just see that shift in my body position in the elbow. If I slice horizontally, this is gonna be much more of a, an ag aggressive, but in the right way, it's gonna take a little bit more hair out and it's gonna give more texture and movement. If I slice vertically, we're still gonna get a similar technique, but it's a lot more seamless and softer. So how does that live? If you have someone with say medium to fine hair that's quite smooth, I would advise slicing on a vertical. If you have someone with medium to thicker hair types where it's got much more movement like I have, I would slice on a horizontal. Because at the same time, we don't want to be too soft and delicate with this either. This is a haircut that's obviously bold. It's meant to look that way. So we don't want it to sit too dense and heavy. So a little couple of tips there of where, you, where, where each of these live, right? So medium to thicker hair, horizontal medium to fine hair, vertical. All right, we have a question from Kara. Kara's asking if you would adjust anything about your sectioning or technique if the client had a more straighter texture or if they had a more coarse or curlier texture. That, yeah, great question. Um, so for, for straighter hair, I would definitely horizontal, uh, slice vertically, okay? So like I just said there, I would switch that technique and slice more vertically. Um, I would also leave, uh, probably go a little bit shorter on straighter hair, right? Because we know wave and curl shrinks up. So a conversation I had with Megan was, you know, we're cutting your hair, obviously it's gonna feel a little shorter, but also we're diffusing it. We're putting curl products in, so it's gonna shrink. So straighter hair, we can afford more hair to come off. Uh, and then for curlier hair, obviously we wanna be a little, we wanna treat it with a little bit more respect, right? Because the curlier it goes, the more we take off, it just springs back. Um, and for straight hair, you could be inclined to razor, back cut, more aggressively slice. I think when the, basically the, the curly the hair gets, we wanna be more delicate with our personalizing. So if for basically from Megan's texture onwards in terms of curl, I would only really twist cut, slice or brick cut. You know, we're definitely not gonna be razoring this texture too much because we don't want the cuticle to be too uh, disruptive, uh, to fly away from what we're trying to achieve too much either. Great question, Cara, thank you. And I think that's a really good point as well. You know, I remember in my early career, you know, sometimes let's say for, for argument's sake, I could do a haircut on the Monday, went really well. I'd have a client come in Tuesday, Wednesday, I think, oh, I'm gonna do the same thing. Do the same thing, didn't quite look the same, right? Because we always have to remember hair types, head shapes, people's individual style, confidence, all these things matter into a technique. So when we have all of our cutting techniques, personalizing, and of course products, right? Products are super important as well. These are all things that, it's like an arsenal, right? It's a little arsenal and everyone that sits in the chair, we just take our toolbox out and we see what serves them best, right? So we don't do the same cutting technique on everyone. We really kind of customize and personalize that experience for every hair type and respect every kind of diversity of hair type that sits in our chair. Okay, so I'm on my last section. So you can see this is where we're working with the most over direction, right? Because the hair is traveling the furthest as it's the furthest section away from me. And as always, as you can see, I'm just really just gently tickling what's there. So it's not really about taking too much higher off at that point. And I'm just gonna slice from the back to the front. Okay, so I'm just gonna give her a little spin. So we do have hair sectioned up, so that perimeter length's not coming out yet, but you can start to, hopefully you can start to see all of the movement. She has got quite dark hair. As it dries, we'll obviously get a little bit lighter in tone, but you can start to see all of this movement that's being encouraged through the hair. So we've essentially, we've just really targeted that problem area for her, which was the protrusion at the occipital bone. So we all have this, right? Every, even our own haircuts, we have, after six to eight weeks, we have problem areas that start to grow out, density, excess length, different movement in terms of the way the hair's kicking. So, you know, that's, that's why we always say as well, you know, six to eight weeks, really, you know, four for short hair, for guys, is, that's more maintenance. They prefer it. Anything past eight weeks, hair is starting to, it's losing that signature, right? That stamp. So that's why I always advise my clients, six to eight weeks is always good. Like, will your hair still look good after eight weeks? Yes, but it will start to lose that kind of personal signature and stamp, which of course is really important, especially when you've got a silhouette. Like this is of course, for me, this is more than a haircut. This is a silhouette. You know, you're seeing a shag, a mullet. It's got great kind of uh, vision to it. And when you see it later, we're gonna take some stills of her with her wardrobe and of course her confidence. That's really gonna come to life there as well. 
All right, guys, so I'm on my last section now before we dry, which is the fringe. Now, we do have quite a lot of, the, the, the fringe is pretty much there. The fringe is pretty much there, but what it is, is heavy. So I'm gonna show a great little technique where your clients might come back in for a fringe trim or, or you're looking at a fringe and you think, right, I get the length good, but the density is always still a, a problem area for me. So what I'm gonna do, you can see I've got a classic fringe section. So let me talk about this a little bit. So a fringe section, we start internally. So this is basically density, right? So how far into the head shape we go, this would be density. And how far wide we go is the width, right? So for classic fringe, we're pretty much looking where the round of the head is. So what really helps, if you get your comb or your cutting tools, if you just let that sit on the curvature of the head with gravity, you will find out exactly where the round of the head is. Now you'll see that my section sits a little bit further back. This is a little bit deeper than a classic fringe because this is rich, much more of a, a shag haircut. The fringe is obviously more of a focal point. So my fringe is deeper. But classically speaking, if this was an everyday fringe, that would sit probably an inch and a half forward and it would just rotate where the curvature of the head is. What's really important, again, classic fringes, you'll notice that if you kind of take your comb and you take a vertical with your comb at the corner of the eyebrow, that's pretty much where we want the fringe to live. Anything past that, so for example, if I kind of work this way or way over this way, this is where we start eating into the hairline. You know, you kind of get those awkward spots in a fringe where you might have had one cut yourself or you've done one in the salon where it starts to flick and it gets really wide. Um, that's, that's one of the reasons why. So density and width perimeter, they're really good kind of basic focus points for us to focus on. So I'm gonna subdivide just because it's quite a large section. I'm gonna subdivide with a horizontal. And this technique I'm gonna show is like a, I call it like, it's like a two birds, one stone, if you like, because the high elevation allows us to focus on the weight, okay? So instead of really waiting, because for me, when it comes to these kind of haircuts, I don't really wanna, yeah, of course, when the hair's dry, you need to do a little bit of something, but I don't wanna do more than 15% of the work when the hair's dry, because you start combing out all that movement, it, it starts going onto a new realm. So the more work we can do on wavy hair or curly hair when it's wet, the better, all right? So I'm gonna adjust this elevation. So again, for a classic fringe, we would be inclined to keep our hand position low to the head shape. I'm gonna actually elevate slightly higher. Let me just make sure you've got a good angle there. Yep, sweet, okay. So slightly higher elevation. My finger position is square to her forehead, all right? And I'm gonna, you can see what I'm doing with the blade here. This would be me going in vertical, so really soft vertical. I'm actually gonna extend my elbow right. I'm gonna drop that so you can see a little bit, there you go. So this basically almost creates, if you will, like a shark tooth point cut. So because she's got so much great movement in her hair, if I do too much of a shallow point cut, this is gonna look blocky and too blunt. So I'm gonna make sure that she's got um, a, a nice texture running through it. You know, for me, ultimately, I think the trick is with clients like Megan is we want to cut their hair so it feels two weeks old. People with this kind of hair, they don't like it to feel freshly cut. They almost want it to feel like it's been done 10 days ago, two weeks. So, for example, the opposite of this would be a blunt cut, right? If I blunt cut this, it's going to feel fresh. It's going to be really heavy. But I want the opposite. I want it to feel lived in and grungy. So I'm working with a nice, aggressive point cut. So finger position nice and square. I'm alternating my hand position now to make sure that I've got balance from left to right. High elevation, that's the trick, right? Because basically we know the lower that we work, the closer that our hands and tools are to skin and body, the heavier the line, the more elevation that we have, the softer it is, right? So we're working on a high elevation to create that softness. So I'm releasing that second section. Again, just taking my time to make sure I'm combing this all in the right way. So we're gonna work straight up to that square line. And again, nice deep point square cut there. You know, fringes for me are fantastic. You know, it doesn't matter if you're working on a shag, a mullet, or just literally one length hair with a fringe. The fringe is the most common disconnection that we're used to as hairdressers, right? Because it's disconnected from everywhere else. 
but you can really, really make or break someone with a fringe. You know, I think our job as hairdressers is to expose beauty, isn't it? Right. So when I'm looking at people, I'm just looking at the hair. Like what are the uplines and downlines saying? The jawline, cheekbones, eye tone, the width of the eye bone to, to the forehead. All of these things matter in terms of your density of sections. Um, so for me, I'm really lucky today because I've got a gorgeous model with Megan. She's got amazing features. So the fringe is all about exposing her beauty. Right? That's, that's what we get paid to do is really make, of course, make someone feel good, provide a service, but really expose their beautiful features. Okay, so when I come to dry this, I'm just gonna put a little bit more Wave Rider in, okay? Um, and then we're gonna diffuse. For me, honestly, I love this hair when it's dried naturally, but of course in the salon, we have to do something, right? We can't leave someone sat there for two hours. So we're gonna diffuse it, which of course is the lightest way to encourage movement. Um, but the products really spring this back to life. One with the cut and two with the product, that curl is gonna, well, the wave, the movement and the curl is gonna really be encouraged through, through the hair there. Looking great. Okay, cool. So I'm going to go ahead and take these clips out and shake this hair through. I've got a wide tooth comb, so I'm, I'm going to put a little bit of product in and then go through that with the wide tooth comb. The reason for that is it just kind of puts hair back to its natural fall. You know, for this kind of hairstyle, the last thing we want it to feel is hairdressery. Right? We, it just always looks much better when it's like rock and roll, right? So almost imagine like She's got a motorbike helmet, she takes it off, she's been doing her thing for a few hours. That for me is when these hairstyles look at the best and most natural. Okay, so we've got all that length through the side that was preserved. We can see those layers of movement from that disconnection that we've worked. Okay, I'm just gonna go through with that comb, a little face brush. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> Makes me feel like a makeup artist, <laughs> which I'm not. Okay, cool. Here we go. So wide tooth comb. You can see I'm just literally just, just brushing that hair away, just in every direction, just to get that natural fall back. And then just give it a nice shake. Okay, cool. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and diffuse now. So just before I get into that, um, we're obviously gonna be a little bit of excess noise now as we diffuse, so I'm gonna talk you through it. We've got the product in there. We've shaken out the movement. Pretty much, this is what I would be saying to Megan in the, in the salon if this was a client situation. I'd be looking at her in the mirror, I'd be sharing the experience with her, I'd be saying, look, this is exactly how we want your hair to look. The only difference is we want it to be dry, right? So let's get it dry. I would recommend her at home. I would say, listen, if you like your hair to dry naturally, Make sure you've got a good amount of product in the hair, comb it into the desired shape, then go about your business. If she was gonna diffuse it like we're doing today, again, I would walk her through it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. She's got medium to thick hair, and we've layered this hair around the, court, around the head shape, right? So this is naturally gonna have volume, isn't it, right? She's got a lot of hair, and the layers are sitting on the rounds of the head. So as this dries, it's just gonna, it's just gonna kind of, it's gonna it, it, it evolve and have a lot more movement and shape. The word I'm looking for is swell. So the hair swells. So if it swells on the round of the head, you get amazing volume. So what I don't want to do here is do too much kind of putting the heat to the rounds of the head because what that's going to do is going to make it have too much volume. So what we're going to do is just kind of drop a head off to the sides and diffuse the mid lengths and ends. Let the top kind of dry naturally. That's the, that's the kind of trick with it. So I've got my two stylers in. I've got the Wave Rider and the Protein Spray, the bass player. What we're gonna do is we're gonna look a little bit more at the finishing products as it starts to dry. I'm probably gonna focus on a bit of a dry serum um, and then a flexible hairspray just to finish off with. But I'm gonna go ahead and dry. A key tip for me when I kind of work on wave or curl, I like to start more gentle and then build up higher. So the last thing I wanna do is go in all guns blazing with high speed and high heat. Because again, we talk about swell, the hair will swell too much and it'll, it'll kind of get away from me. You know, I won't be able to control the silhouette or the movement. So I'm gonna work on a high heat, but a lower speed to begin with. And then when we kind of get to about 75, 80% dry, this is where we can kick it up a notch. Okay, so that's personally how I like to work with wave and, and, and curl, just because it gives a little bit more element of control. Cool. I always say, when I have clients with wave and curl, I always say, actually, I, I, I prefer it when they're at home and it dries naturally. When they've got the right products in the hair, of course, product's super important. 
that's when it looks the best. For me, curl and wave works really well when it's dry naturally, and it's almost at that kind of frizz line. Not frizzing, just borderline. That's when it's got its most personality and character. So just picking up that hair, resting it into the diffuser, and just leaving it a few seconds. So you notice I'm, I'm kind of directing the heat away from the head. If the heat of this uh, tool goes to the head shape, I'm going to get more unwanted volume. One thing's for sure, I can get volume in this hair. It's going to have it naturally. And if I want more, I can blast it in. But I definitely don't want it to get away from me. So I'm not directing any of this heat towards the head shape. It's coming off. I think when it comes to drying techniques like this as well, patience is key. You know, I'm just making sure that, you know, the hair is drying in the right manner, the right formation. I'm not trying to rush it. It dries really quickly and nicely, actually. This is nice. So as I start to get towards the top of the head shape, I'm just going to come through. Make sure that's not too hot. And work downwards, right? So I'm working downwards with gravity right now. Because again, this hair is going to swell. I'm going to say that word a lot. The swell of this hair is going to be huge. So I think you guys would have saw the references I've provided of Stevie Nicks. So, you know, what a great thing about when Stevie Nicks had this hairstyle Sometimes you saw it, it was a lot more voluminous. Sometimes it was a bit closer to the head shape. So the silhouette can always be exaggerated or diluted. You know, for me, for this kind of inspiration, I always, I, you know, I'm always kind of crate digging, I call it, through old records, music videos. So now, obviously, we've got the great thing like YouTube now and different websites. So for me, when I was younger, it was VH1, <laughs> MTV. But now we've got the internet. So I'm forever looking at old cinema, old movies, music videos. You know, it's like anything, right? Fashion and trends, they just come back around with a full circle. We have a little twist, for sure. But, uh, you know, definitely looking back to that 70s era, was a great time for hair. For me, I think the 70s and 80s was where there was so much personality in hair. People weren't, they weren't conforming as much. You know, the conservative hair didn't seem to exist. People were really wearing their personality through their hair, which I kind of wish I was uh, hairdressing in that period as well sometimes. You know, I always try and talk to clients as well. You know, I think as we know, hair, our clients can be, we have all walks of life with clients. Some are quite conservative, some are a little bit edgier. But I always say to every single one, hair is an accessory, isn't it? You know, it grows back, it's not permanent. I think hair is an accessory that, you know, we can change the tools, the way we dry it. Monday to Friday, it does a certain thing. The weekend, it can do something completely different. So I think the more we, the more we can kind of get people to look at their hair as an accessory, the more, the more, um, more creative we can be.
The fantastic thing about this range is that these products have been carefully cherry picked and selected, if you like. So right now in the styling and finishing range, we've got six products. These are kind of hero tried and tested formulations that almost every hairdresser should have to create these kind of looks. And what's really, really amazing about this range, and I think is something that has been signature to Bedhead from TG for many years, is cocktailing and layering. So this is a great way of really personalizing the experience for the client because cocktailing and layering is essentially the mixing of two products and you can create that special customizable third that might not live on the shelf, right? So right now I've worked with the Wave Rider and the Protein Spray. So I'm getting strength, condition and movement. And then when I work with the finishing products, I'm going to work on a dry serum and a hairspray. I always talk about styling hair like seasoning a dish, right? We have salt, pepper, chili, basil. We know we can make or break a dish with seasoning. Too much, too little, it goes a long way when cooking. It's exactly the same with hairdressing. The amount of products we choose to put in the hair and really importantly, when this can make or break a hairstyle. So just being patient, just working around the head, just kind of orbiting the head shape, making sure that we're getting some nice, even drying movement through there. You know, I think when uh, I always communicate, whenever I'm kind of doing, you know, rock and roll textures with clients, this is a, a texture which evolves throughout the day as well, right? So, you know, you notice anyone with curl or wave or a mullet or a shag, they look very different at 10 a.m. to what they do at 2 p.m., right? Because they, they touch it, it evolves, the products kick in, the environment kicks in, whether they live somewhere hot, somewhere humid, all of those elements have a massive factor. So again, that kind of factors into product choice as well. I always kind of use a slightly heavier base product. So you know when we do a consultation and our clients sit in the chair and they're always touching their hair, they're always flipping it from the left to the right. That says to me that, right, every day, all day, she or he or they are touching their hair constantly. So it's going to evolve, it's going to grow. So I'm like, look, we need a product in the hair that's not going to over frizz. Because we know the more we touch hair, what does it do? It starts to frizz. So, you know, all these little kind of hints and tips are what I kind of share with the clients as well. Because, listen, if you're touching your hair a lot, an oil is not going to cut it because your hair is going to get frizzier and frizzier. So let's work with a soft styling cream where you get a little bit of support, a little bit of hold, but it grows and evolves throughout the day. You know, Stevie Nicks, uh, Paddy Smith, Joan Jett, Fleetwood Mac, Rolling Stones. I think, you know, when you kind of check out these music videos or, you know, any kind of images, uh, you know, for me, for me, hair was very gender fluid at that point as well. You know, you look at Mick Jagger, Stevie Nicks, it, it didn't matter the gender. The hair, the hair for me was probably one of the most gender fluid times when it came to hairdressing. So we can see the stairs getting more and more personality as we dry. So I'm going to just diffuse a little bit more and then I'm going to take the diffuser off and I'm almost going to massage the root. So it's a kind of, a, I guess, a, a, a uniform way of blast drying. So I'm going to work counterclockwise on the left uh, and, and clockwise, sorry, counterclockwise on the right and clockwise on, the, on her left. And that way we kind of pick up the hair from the root and it kind of dries in a similar formation, so we've got control. Drop your head to the right, my love. Thank you. Let me know if it gets too hot. And then same the other side. So 
So, you know, we're definitely kind of pushing this more of an editorial finish. I think we hear this word a lot, you know, editorial. What does it mean? I think editorial means something more, you know, what we're kind of seeing in the fashion mags where hair is still, for me, commercial. You know, things t change with time. You know, a few years ago, an undercut or a mullet was extreme. Again, depending on where you are in the world, what kind of work you do. A mullet can be like swearing in church for some people because it's really extreme. For others, it's a daily practice. So I think that's something to take into account as well. But editorial is more the finish of the hair. This could be one length hair, but it's just those little nuances, right? So when I say non-hairdressery hair, you know, we're taught and trained as hairdressers to make everything beautiful and balanced and controlled. And editorial hair is actually almost making the client, the model, the subject feel like it's just undone. It's DIY. Yeah, I think that's a really difficult thing for us to do sometimes as hairdressers. Commercially, I think we see it with beach waves. You know, I think a lot of young girls and guys come into the salon, they want this kind of beachy hair. But it's not about making something look uniformed and controlled. It's actually the opposite. It's almost like, imagine a really nice blow dry that's been slept on. It's 4 p.m. the next day. That's kind of the beach wave, right? So it's that kind of undone elegance to the hair. Um, so again, done with product and almost just taking your conventional hairdresser's hat off um, and just touching hair almost like the individual would themselves at home. Okay, so taking the diffuser off now. Okay, so I'm going to work on uh, a low speed, medium heat. On her left side, we're going to work clockwise. Her right side, counterclockwise. That's where we start to get that kind of real Paddy Smith, Stevie Nicks texture and all that volume and life. So you can see this is what I was talking about before. This hair has volume, right? I didn't need to put, put too much swell in it to begin with. So kind of really get that aggressive movement and volume in the hair and then we can kind of piece it out with some products after all right so product wise i'm going to work with two products i'm going to focus firstly on let me just make sure you get this in shot so juxtapose this is a fantastic dry serum now it's almost counterintuitive what it says it's a dry serum so typically in hairdressing we notice serums as being quite oil based very conditioning very soft this is all of those things, but it's got a dryness to it. So it actually almost feels like the emollient almost feels like, um, you know, like a dry suntan oil that you can put on your skin when you go as like an SPF. It's very reminiscent of something like in skincare. So what it allows you to do for these kind of hair types is create movement and texture, but it's not, too, it's not like a wax based product where it's sticky and, you know, the hair is not moving because for me with this kind of hair, the hair still has to have personality and as she moves, the hair moves as well. That's super important when it comes to the finishing products. With that being said, it leads me nicely onto the contortionist. And contortionist obviously is something that moves and bends. This is one of the most flexible, workable hairsprays that we have in our portfolio. So this is something that, a little tip when it comes to hairsprays, when we spray these, the closer this is to a deodorant, okay? So, you know, for me, when we use a deodorant, it's something that disperses and it almost becomes invisible. The more lighter and versatile a hairspray is, it almost looks like a deodorant. The stronger the hairspray, when you spray it, you're going to have droplets, right? So without even looking at a product, it's really important to understand what it's giving you. So a heavier hairspray will have droplets. This basically means get your hands in there, get it set and get out because it's going to be a firm hold finish. Something like this, this is great if you're always touching the hair. You maybe do a lot of updos, wedding hair, hair that you still want to move and have personality. Or if you're, always, if you're anything like me, indecisive. You keep changing your mind and touching it. So a great hairspray to work with as well. So I'm just going to work this in. If I get you to actually just stand up one second, does that work? Does that work for you guys? Can I stand her up? Yeah. Yeah, you have a question actually about when products will be available and where. Okay, perfect. So our styling and finishing range is available now. You can get these products at Cosmoprof. So all of the products I'm using right now live on camera are available. Uh, our fantastic wash and care line is coming mid-2023. Uh, with that, like I say, we've got a moisture-based shampoo and conditioner. We've got a treatment base, and we've also got two boosters. So the idea is you at the backwash as the hairdresser and the professional, the client at home, they can customize their conditioning experience, right? Because it's not copy and paste, it's not cookie cutter, it's not about one product suiting everybody. We've got treatment bases that you can mix with the masks, 
and you can leave it on for anything between three to five minutes and you really restore that parity and condition to the hair. Okay, so this is where we kind of, our visual eye takes over. I'm just gonna move this chair out of the way. Just before I remove her gown, I'm just making sure we've got a nice kind of 360 silhouette. I've kind of pushed this for you guys. She's actually a, a biker. We're gonna take some stills and videos. So when you guys head to BTC, after you'll be able to see the stills and, and how this comes alive. So she's got amazing outfit. She's actually rides a motorbike. So I think, you know, for me, when we do hair, it's about making someone be close to home, wearing their personality. When I first started hairdressing, someone said to me, and it always stuck with me, anything's in fashion as long as you wear it with confidence. And I take that into hairdressing. It doesn't matter what it is. You don't need a vogue, a dazed and confused to say, this is in fashion, this is not in fashion. Anybody wears something with confidence, it works, it flies. So she's a biker. So this haircut is all about that. So I'm kind of exaggerating the texture a little bit uh, with the hairspray. And then let me just uh, remove the gown for you. There we go. You're very welcome. Sweet, thanking you. So perfect, there you go. So we're gonna whip it to the front a little bit, give your hair a little shake so we can start to see all of that amazing movement. But I'm gonna get out of the way because I'm ruining it. <laughs> there you go, you can give your hair a little bit of a shake of movement. So the idea was 70s inspired rock and roll hair. So Stevie Nicks, Paddy Smith, Joan Jett, that was the inspiration. Um, the products that we used, we worked with a protein spray and a, and a wave rider, which is basically a, a curl cream, a, um, a wave cream if you like both really conditioning and add movement and softness to the hair. We finished the hair off with juxtaposed dry serum and the contortionist hairspray. So dry serum mixed with a very flexible hairspray. The cutting technique, just to recap what we did, we worked with progressive layers that were really shallow. So what I meant by that is the layering techniques that we did did not surpass the rounds of the head. So the further we kind of eat into the perimeter, so the further past we go the rounds of the head, the less density and more length we take out. So everything was shallow in terms of the layering. And it was very simple. It was block layering. If I get you to go profile. So again, this was home, right? So this was our home button. Everything came to this point. We worked a square line. We point cut. We sliced. Everything behind was over-directed up to. Everything in front was over-directed back. And we created that slight inversion, right? So the shortest layers were in the front, in the middle, sorry. And then we build up that length and softness towards the perimeter. The fringe was cut horizontal. We elevated that really high. So it allowed us to keep the length or remove weight. And I think that's really a great technique for fringes where you want to keep what's going on through the perimeter, but you really want to take that weight out, especially with wave and curl. As we discussed in the live, you know, straighter hair, finer hair, curly hair, we would deviate the technique slightly along with the product choices. But ultimately, again, it's using our tools, right? All of those techniques that we have in our tool chest to really pull out this amazing movement and texture. So we're gonna take some great stills of her and videos before she gets off on a motorbike. It's been a pleasure. Thank you to having me. Thank you to everyone at BTC. It's been too long, but I've really enjoyed being back. But thank you so much.